Greetings, champion. Would you like your life to become more? Well, keep watching. I'm going to give you principles of success and power and mainly to focus on the power of a decision. Once you make a decision, a committed decision, and you won't compromise, you can have just about anything. In 1919, Conrad Hilton, have you ever heard of the Hilton Hotels? I'm, I want to kind of share his story. He decided to purchase a, a hotel in Cisco, Texas. And at that time, he saw a picture of the great Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City. When he saw that, something clicked on the inside of him. He was so moved by the picture of the hotel that he got a photograph and mounted it on the wall so that he could keep that picture in front of his eyes. What you keep in front of your eyes is important. Keep the mighty word of God in front of your eyes. Keep building your faith every single day, praise God, because without faith, it's impossible to please God, Hebrews 11:6. That picture eventually became Conrad Hilton's dream board. He saw himself as an owner of that hotel. He said to himself, the Waldorf Astoria, the greatest of them all, is going to be my hotel. He then declared and decided, and you have to decide, and you have to declare, I will someday own that hotel. He didn't say in the name of Jesus, but you and I can say stuff like that. That was some statement, because he owned a little crappy ho hotel uh, or motel in somewhere in Texas that nobody ever heard about. Anyway, uh, even though his current circumstances said that he's in a small, pitiful, painful place and won't ever have very much, I want you to get in the habit of thinking big in small places. That's what Conrad Hilton did. And he decreed that that's going to be mine. Did you know that Job 22, 28 says, you shall also decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. Decree that you're blessed. Decree that you're the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. He soon uh, purchased another uh, motel in El Paso. And after a few purchases, the Great Depression hit. And he was nearly for forced into bankruptcy and lost several of his hotels. Although he, he was able to stay as the manager, but he lost the ownership. He decided not to quit and not to give up on his dream. He eventually bought back the hotels he had lost during the Great Depression. By 1943, Conrad Hilton owned the first coast-to-coast -coast hotel chain in the United States. In 1946, Hilton Hotel Corporation, I think it was called, was listed on the stock market, the New York Stock Exchange, and soon Hilton became the first international brand of hotels in the world in 1949. And what did he do? he purchased the great Waldorf Astoria in New York City. And so Hilton's philosophy states that, that it has been and continues to be our responsibility to fill the earth with light and warmth of hospitality. I think that's his motto, okay? Today there's about like 2,500 Hilton uh, Conrad Hilton brand hotels worldwide. A giant oak tree is produced by a little tiny acorn. A little tiny key can open a big bank vault, a big treasure chest. So keep dreaming, keep learning, keep working towards your magnificent obsession. And someday soon, maybe like Conrad Hilton, you're going to have much more than you have now. In Matthew 14, the story is told about Jesus going up into the mountains. They had a big crusade during the daytime. Jesus went up in the mountains. He told the disciples, go the other side or get in the boat. Go the other side. I'll meet you. Okay. And so when evening was come, Jesus was there alone. And so I like to say teasing, he prayed too long. He missed the boat. But the boat and the disciples were now in the midst of the sea and being battered and by, by the waves, for the, for the wind was blowing hard and the waves were high. 
And in the fourth watch, the Bible says that Jesus went to them on the water, walking on the water. And when the disciples saw him walking on the water, it just simply says they were troubled. But the next part says they cried out for fear and they thought it was a ghost. Ah, a guy walking on water. Who is that guy? Well, pretty soon Jesus yelled out to them, be of good cheer. It's me. Don't be afraid. And Peter answered Jesus, the Bible says. And I, I, it's a f funny word. He called out to Jesus and said, Jesus, Lord, if it's really you, uh, call me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. Now, Peter had a decision to make. He could step out in the raging water, might go under. I don't know how good of a swimmer he is. I assume because he was a fisherman, he was pretty good. But the, the water was rough, okay? But Peter came out of the boat and he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind blowing hard, he was afraid. And the Bible says he began to sink. If you have a swimming pool in your backyard tonight when it's really quiet and no wind blowing, just get in your swimsuit and try to walk or keep your clothes on better yet. And just if the water's really calm, try to walk across it. See, it does, you, you can't walk across it no matter how still it is. So it didn't matter if the wind, the wind was blowing. He was walking on water. Hey, Bartholomew, look at me, man. I'm out here dancing on the water with Jesus. He could have been saying stuff like that, but then maybe a wave splashed against his ankle and maybe his hair started to blow and he thought, oh my gosh, it, it's too windy for me to walk on water. Any excuse will work. The devil uses anything. Anyway, he be, the Bible says he began to sink. Can you imagine in the Olympics, uh, one of the divers dives off the high high board, does the flips and the twists and all that stuff. And the announcer saying, okay, the tip of his fingers are in the water. He's down to his uh, elbows. His head's now in the water. He's now at his stomach. Let's see if his legs move. Uh, oh, that was a good dive. You don't begin to sink in water, right? You're, you're either on top of the water or you're in it. But he began to sink and Jesus reached out and caught him. And so if you're beginning to sink, or if you already sunk, reach out to Jesus. And as you extend your hand of faith to him, he'll extend his hand of faith to you. Praise God. Amen. All right. So the principle is uh, you got to doubt your desires or you're, you got to, you got to doubt your doubts. I guess I can say it that way. Doubting your doubts. A lot of people doubt their desires. After living so many years as a faithful employee, making other people rich, enabling them to live their dream, sometimes people wake up and say, wait a minute, I'm making this other guy rich and I'm not getting anywhere. I'm barely having my needs met. I'm living from paycheck to paycheck. And so they've got to, what they need to do is break out of that mold. They've got to have a dream, a desire, a goal. And so children seem to have no self-limitation, no self-limiting beliefs, I guess I could say, until other people teach them what to do. And so uh, if, if you're one of a thousand that wants more in life, start reading the scriptures on prosperity. If you need healing, read the healing scriptures. If you need peace, read the scriptures on peace because faith comes to you as you hear the word of God. When God speaks, faith comes. When you don't hear God speak, fear comes. So you got a choice every day, get in the mighty word of God. Every day, feed your faith and starve your doubts, praise God. Listen, I'm Pastor Glenn Curry and I love you. If you uh, want to get a bigger life, Keep hearing this uh, YouTube, listen to the podcast, my podcast, Pillars of Faith Christian, loaded on your phone. You can listen on Spotify. The main thing I want you to do to help me is like and subscribe and follow because I'm going to bring you more faith, the mighty word of God and principles of faith. God bless you. Have a great day.